Local nursing homes and assisted living facilities are dealing with outbreaks of COVID-19, and that includes the Citadel in Salisbury. Uh, there are at least 96 confirmed cases at the facility, and over the last few weeks, families have told Channel 9 they have concerns because the nursing facility never alerted them to the outbreak. got a response from the Citadel and a letter it sent to residents and Tina that facility says it is doing everything it can to protect those who live there. Uh, yeah, the parent company for the Citadel here sent that letter out to families really asking for help keeping residents safe. Now, for the past couple of weeks, we've told you about the outbreak at the Citadel in Salisbury. Last week, we told you 96 patients at the facility tested positive for COVID-19. Some families have told us they had absolutely no outbreak until they saw it on the news. Now, in that letter from the parent company, leaders said in part, in certain centers, the virus attacked so fast and so aggressively that we did not have time to speak with you before you heard it through the media. Now, last week, I also told you about a family at the Citadel who says their loved one passed away and no one at the facility notified them about this. We're pushing to find out more information on that case. Why did that happen? And we're also working to bring you much more information on this particular outbreak tonight, starting at five on Channel 9. Back to you at the desk. All right, Tina, thank you very much. The president now wants nursing homes to be required to report cases to the public. Coming up, reporter Anthony Castura walks us through more of the impacts on local nursing homes. And those local nursing home cases are contributing to the totals in North Carolina. In the last 90 minutes, we learned there are now more than 6,700 cases statewide. Sadly, two more people have died in Burke County. They are among the 179 deaths statewide. And we have not gotten an update from South Carolina yet, but here's where things stand as of right now. There are more than 4,300 cases, including 156 in your county. 120 people have unfortunately died in the state. Today marks three months since the first confirmed case in the United States. There are now more than 750,000 cases and more than 40,000 deaths. Starting today, all employees at Walmart and Sam's Club must wear masks. Seven Midwestern governors say they will coordinate on when to reopen their states. As many governors across the United States say coronavirus testing is far from where it should be. Well, in a few hours, we expect a controversial announcement from South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster. He's expected to reopen stores that have been shut down for weeks. It's a decision that's weighing public health and the health of our economy. South Carolina had its first case back on March 7th. Nearly a month later, on April 1st, the governor ordered the first non-essential businesses to close. He expanded that on April 4th, and then he issued a stay-at-home order on the 6th. Now, tomorrow, we could see some of those restrictions start to lift. Governor Henry McMaster is expected to open music and bookstores, flea markets and department stores. His chief of staff told the Post and Courier the governor wants those reopened Tuesday. They say each store will be limited to five customers per 1,000 square feet. Public Beach Access will also reopen on Tuesday, but local governments are still able to make their own rules. South Carolina Bureau reporter Greg Suskin is speaking with local lawmakers and businesses about this expected announcement, and he will have a live update and report for us starting at 5 o'clock. Well, hundreds of inmates transferred over the weekend because of an outbreak of COVID-19. We've told you that there are more than 300 inmates who've tested positive for the virus at News Correctional in Goldsboro. And our Dave Faraday joins us live from Burke County, where more than 100 inmates arrived to help with the crisis in the eastern part of the state. Damani, the Division of Prisons told us this morning that none of the inmates that were transferred here to Burke County have tested positive for COVID-19. They say that they were transferred here south of Morganton to help free up some staffing in the eastern part of the state. 
where they're dealing with that big outbreak that you mentioned. Take a look at some of this video that we shot this morning. All the inmates moved here to the Burke Confinement and Response Violation Center south of Morganton came from the Johnston Correctional in Smithfield, which was temporarily closed. That move was made to free up staff to help over at News Correctional in Goldsboro, where 333 inmates are infected with the virus. This morning in Burke County, we could see detention officers wearing masks, but that was not the case for inmates who were also not social distancing in an outdoor area this morning. The North Carolina Division of Prisons told us everyone is being encouraged to practice social distancing. Burke Confinement uh, facility moved offenders housed there. Um, and also for parole tech, uh, technical violations to Foothills and Morrison Correctional. All this in an effort to free up some staffing and some space over here. Um, we did get a chance though, to talk with a number of folks who want health guidelines followed here in Burke County. We would need to do a, a temperature check, make sure that uh, they're not running a fever and uh, wear a mask and protect, quarantine the ones that are. And prison leaders are telling us that the staff over at Noose have been working in some incredibly difficult conditions with the outbreak. 333 inmates again testing positive over in that area. And they desperately needed the support from that Johnston facility. That's why those inmates were moved here mm. to Burke County. Back to you guys. All right, Dave Faraday reporting live for us tonight. Thank you, Dave. The managers of a West Charlotte motel have now reversed course and will allow guests to stay. We saw residents packing up at Suburban Extended Stay on Billy Graham Parkway when we stopped by last night. They were initially told they had until 6 o'clock today to get out, but now the managers say it was a mix-up. Because of the stay-at-home order, they can stay, but employees don't feel safe and won't come to work. Residents say they feel punished. You won't get toilet paper, you won't get sheets, you won't get towels. When they say we can't get no new sheets and new towels, that's dirty. That is, that is beyond dirty. The property manager says they are working to get refunds for the people who do want to leave. A local furniture company is stepping up to help make sure that nurses and doctors stay protected. HBF in Hickory will start making masks and surgical gowns. They will then donate them to local first responders and healthcare workers. Right now, the company says they will make at least 2,000 masks a week. Several other furniture makers in our area are also doing the same thing. In Morganton, the EJ Vicker Funeral Company had 50 of its employees making surgical masks. The company says so far, they've been able to produce 10,000 masks and they expect to make more. Other companies in the area like Fairfield Chair are making surgical gowns for employees. They are like the area like Fairfield Chair is also making those important protective gear. In Statesville, JS Fiber is staying busy. They're actually making hospital pillows. Employees, they are also working overtime. They've already made 50,000 pillows since the outbreak began. Well, Atrium Health is opening new testing locations to keep up with the demand. Today, until 4, you can go to the Clinton Chapel AME Zion Church on Roselle's Ferry Road. Then Wednesday from noon to 7, you can go to the Forest Hill Church South Boulevard campus Friday from 11 to 6. And they are also offering testing at Northside Baptist Church on Jeremiah Boulevard. No appointment is necessary.